Morning, good evening. Uh, there's no public here. Um, minutes of the previous meeting from November 5th. Are there any errors or omissions? Noted. I make a motion to approve the minutes from last month's meeting. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, bills. Um, are there any we have one addition this evening. This is Conica Minolta Premier Finance in the amount of three ten, three hundred ten dollars. It's our uh, monthly lease payment. Okay, does anyone have any comment on the bills? <coughs> I make a motion that we pay the bills as amended. Have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence. We have no correspondence this evening. Okay. Okay, the first thing we have uh, those ice time requirements, that's, that item has been postponed until next board meeting until the board gets a chance to read what it's going to be. I haven't read it myself. <laughs> okay, the second one is the res resolution now. There's some controversy over what the name of Rock Street is. Is it Rock Street or Rock Avenue? So apparently it was always Rock Street. Somehow in some paperwork it got changed to Rock Avenue. Anyway, uh, they need a clarification of it. The post office request that or who requested that? 911. 911. So I have a resolution naming it either way the board chooses. We can name it Avenue or Street. Um, on this map here that is Rock Street. So what is, and that's 2014. What's the board's pleasure on this? Street. Well, leave the street. Leave the street. Yep. Okay. Uh, motion. I. No, I mean oh, somebody make a motion. I make a motion. We leave it to Rock Street. Uh, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I ask the clerk to notify the various people that have to be notified about this. Um, I have a thing from the uh, Clinton County somebody or other. Or this EMS, and then there's one from the, from the um, uh, real property, Pat Air. And the post office. Be so we'll just let them know officially Rock Street. Okay. Um, announcement there's going to be <coughs> toys for tots. The Marine Corps thing is going to be here on December 9th at 4 30 in the rec center parking lot. Not coming in on the train? Uh, they split. Really? Yeah. There's a convoy coming up from Albany. Hmm. Do you know, Steve, why that is? I don't know. Somebody, uh, or Donna, did you, you Donna knows so. Yeah, Amtrak is no longer um, sponsoring it. So now it's done through um, a convoy coming up from Albany, and it's um, Capital Region. Um, is taking it over. So there'll be um, tractor trailers, six tractor trailers, there'll be vans, there'll be police escort from Albany through the different counties, and this is the last stop. And the trucks will be lit, and there will be Marines presenting the toys to the various organizations. Yeah, this is not, as I understand it, this is not like giving the toys out to just anybody. Like, don't bring your kid here you know, for a toy. This is like, these oh, are the going to have kids here. It's, it's designated for specific organizations that request it. Right. And that's what I was told through either JCEO, JCEO the, the church or the fire department, they mm -hmm. take requests. So it's through those organizations. Right. It's not, um, Santa's not going to be here handing out gifts or, or the Marines. It's for the um, organizations. They issue them out to the organizations, some of the organizations that you hand them out to right. the kids. That's a big change. But the Legion, the Legion usually goes up. Well, they, they, might be one the part of, they might be one of the organizations. Well, because I know the Legion and the Fire Department used to go up and stand by the railroad tracks so nobody get close to the 
most of the tracks and stuff and keep them off the deck mm -hmm. up there, off the walkway and stuff, and then they would make them go in single file like and stuff, you know. There's supposed to be a press release and a media event, I believe, tomorrow is going to be scheduled. Oh. Um, I'm not sure if it's in the Albany area, but um, as soon as we get more information, we'll pass it on. Okay. Because otherwise, those kids will be at the airport, just like. Oh, yeah. Before. Oh, yeah. Well, like I say, this is new to me, you know, it's new to everybody because it's the first time they've done it this way, so. Yeah. Uh, okay. Empire State Trail. Let me ask you a question. Is there any events going on here December 9th at that time? No. This is in the daytime, or 4.30? It, they've coordinated, Sergeant Dominey with the Clinton County Sheriff's Department coordinated everything with um, Ms. Jeff yes. to make sure oh. that the parking lot is clear, there's nothing. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. It's already been taken care of. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have, on your Empire State Trail, do you have an update on that, Steve? Uh, yeah, so the, um, the Hudson River Valley Greenway, who has the responsibility of locating these trailheads throughout <coughs> New York State, uh, is seeking a... Uh, a response from the board about which location they would the board would prefer for the trailhead to be I've sent all of you I think information about it and I placed uh, I did get some example illustrations that I put in your mailboxes this morning um, that give you an idea of the types of things that they would put at these trailheads um, so ultimately um, what I'm looking to do is get a response or a uh, consensus from the board so that I can relate to them what, what you choose and then they can move forward with it. Um, they're, they're expecting these things to be rolled out pretty fast, meaning, you know, I, I couldn't give a date, but springtime um, is what they're shooting for. So they're trying to get some surveying done now. Okay, we'll take care of that right now. Okay, so the board knows there was two sites proposed, uh, one in the front parking lot of the rec center and one uh, downtown on private property um, or discuss this at length um, we would have to acquire the private property before we could turn this over for this to the state for this project so that kind of ruled it out so that left this this property here um, so would someone like to make a motion I make a motion that we make the trailhead here at the Civic Center. Second. Okay, second. Now, uh, motion to second for discussion. Is there any discussion on this? You know, as far as the, you know, I think it's great that we discussed it before. I think, uh, I think we did too. He just wants it wrapped better up. Better parking somehow. and everything else here. Yeah. And it's it's just a, it's, there's right. no, no, uh, no cost. cost legal things. Right. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Okay. That's taken care of. That's all I have at this time. Uh, Trustee Arno? I'd like to, I only got a couple things. I'd like to thank the village crew for the cleanup of the after the storm. It looks pretty nice and stuff. And also uh, the parade for the children uh, tree lighting. Uh, are you going to do the hot chocolate? Yeah. Okay. So you need a hand? I'll give you a hand. Yeah. For that, we got three three things coming up here. We got something at the train station <coughs> when the train comes in. Right, the holiday train. And we got the, the lighting the tree and the march of the thing over to the village now. The village pump house. Yeah, Donna, are you on top of that this year again? The parade the torch, yes. Okay. So yeah. that's all set to go. You use all the help, all the boards invited to come to that, help out. Are you still in need of Santa? Okay. I'll take care. Okay, and then, then after that, then we got the, the, the Toys for Tots. So there's three things going on here. Yes. And they're all <laughs> eight to ten days apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the toys, toys for Tots is December 9th at 4.30 here, Rec Center. And uh, train, the holiday train is December... November... Or November, November 27th. 27th? Yes. 27th. 8.45. And yeah, the parade of toys is December 7th. And December 7th. At 6.45. I don't have my list with me because it's on my refrigerator. Okay. All right. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Dart. Uh, I don't have anything specific at this time, but I may assist uh, Trustee LeBlanc in uh, the economic development or anything else that uh, you may or may not. That is fine. So, nothing specifically in mind. Okay, Trustee Menard. Uh, I have one thing tonight. Um, I we've been discussing before uh, for the Civic Center. We're gonna we're I would like to propose that we purchase a new skate sharpener for our ice skates here in the Civic Center. We haven't had a good one. We've got an old one that we have, but hasn't been really used since Michael Lemieux retired. So we're going to try to purchase a uh, fully automatic skate sharpener that would help out at the Civic Center. So I'd like to make a motion that we purchase an automatic skate sharpener for the Civic Center. Okay, we have a second for discussion. Second, second from Trustee LeBlanc. Okay, uh, we pretty much discussed all the intricacies of this at the last meeting. Um, our son, is there any problem with buying this the way that we're buying it without, you know, bidding it or anything? Or I think it's kind of a unique piece of equipment. That's, yeah, I think he's gone out and tried to get a couple of bolts. Yeah. Okay, so you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to go out to bid for it because it's it. not over 20. $20,000. Okay, okay. I just want to be sick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then uh, I would say try to ask them if they'll take a trade in on our old one. Yeah, otherwise, we'll have problems trying to get rid of that thing. It'll be another issue. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Fire State Sharper. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all I have for this evening. Just wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Trustee Walk. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I've got, I've got a couple, few items. Uh, I'll start out with the easiest one first. Uh, update on economic development. I met with the Clinton County IDA and discussed options uh, that the, where the village can uh, evaluate uh, vis a vis setting up our own local development corporation or partnering with them or availing ourselves of, of some other possible state programs. Uh, so this time I'm collecting information from the IDA. They give me a fee schedule and things like that. Uh, I won't go into a lot of detail here, but I'll do a write up summary later on to digest all the information. But they're very, very positive and, uh, and would like to, to help us in any way they can. And uh, so it was a very positive meeting. Again, I'll, I'll get more details on that. Um, well, this is just to help out the downtown or? All economic development that all started, but obviously uh, anything. Well, just anything actually, and any type of economic development that, that we, we want to do, especially in terms of uh, rehabilitation, lands, uh, buildings, and you know, construction, and anything. Yep. So obviously, they, um, there's a history of, of the IEA. I'm not going to get into okay. it now, but right. you know, there's a lot of projects in the country. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, I guess actually doing it. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, we'll get something a little more uh, detailed probably by the next meeting or so, but we're still continuing to talk and, and to develop uh, a long-term plan here. Uh, on the second front, uh, myself and Trustee Dart are still holding uh, our weekly meetings and talking to citizens outside of the meetings, and uh, I, uh, Trustee Dart prepared some information for the evening, so I'll let him chime in on, uh, on the feedback that he's got from citizens. Now, this is the first of the three meetings. First of the three, and the, the next one is tomorrow about. night at, eight, at 7 o'clock here, right here, and then a week from tomorrow night. Okay. So fine. And then we'll reevaluate uh, how the Give us a final report on the. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, not necessarily going to nail ourselves down to uh, three meetings. We'd like to see uh, you know, some citizen involvement, residents, business owners, or whoever, members of zoning and planning. Uh, we got one business owner at, the, at our first meeting. It was very productive. Uh, as Ron said, we've, we've both been in contact with uh, some other business owners plus people we run into in the residence. And they've given us a lot of good suggestions on which way they'd like to see the village go and some ideas. Um, this isn't going to be done overnight as we're aware of uh, our biggest piece of real estate in the village it was recently sold and 
we look forward to working with those folks all we can as, as part of the CDC Economic Development Committee. Um, as I said, uh, we've scheduled three meetings, but we don't necessarily gonna hold ourselves to that. Uh, we had a plan of perhaps uh, putting something together and presenting it to the board and something for the budget at January 1st, but we're not sure that you know, we will have everything formulated at that time. Um, a big part of the success of this program, as we see it, is to be able to enable small businesses uh, to want to establish in Rouse's Point, and uh, we'd like to come up with some seed monies that we come up from the Village General Fund. We haven't decided what we're going to need yet. The general purpose for that, we will be, uh, we will have that in outline uh, at the end of our fact gathering. Very good. That's what I have on that. Okay. Very good. There'll be a lot more to follow on this. It's uh, never ending. Now, Mr. Mayor, I have, a, I have a question about two agenda items that I submitted and uh, are not on the agenda. Uh, and I'd like to know the reason why those agenda items were pulled. Did you get my response in the, in the email? Yes, I did. I got your response. I can <coughs> read it if you want. And if you'd like. <coughs> so my, my first agenda item, uh, I'm going to, to request uh, that actually be taken on this. I said, I want to send a letter from the village of Ross's Point to ERS, which is the new ownership of the, uh, of the ex Pfizer property about obtaining the two buildings that we have previously discussed. Uh, we either need a yes or no if they consider uh, some kind of sale or whatever to the village. Uh, that's it. I told you I'd be making a motion to do this. And your response was, I'll be meeting in the very near future with ERS and I will inquire about what their plans are for this property. If they are considering selling those parcels for development into something that creates jobs and adds to the tax base, then the village certainly has no business interfering with that. That that comment was pretty offensive to me, Mr. Mayor. Right there. Why was why was that offensive? Because it implied that I was trying to take property off the tax base. No, it's not. It's it's saying if you if the discussion before, I know what I wrote, right. and I mean every word of it. What I'm saying is, my intention of that was that. The talk at the left two meetings ago was taking the old office building and making it into a village office, which would take it off the tax roll. That's what you said. Yeah, and I think it's very good purpose. And that specifically takes the potential of who knows what, maybe a million dollar development on that lot off the tax rolls and puts it at village property at tax exempt. That's what I said specifically. And that's what I meant. Well, that's what it, that man of that's not what it says in here. Well, how, how does it say anything other than that? Well, I can read it again. Read it again. Have to, but I want to proceed. I want a motion on the floor to force the village to send a letter to ask for negotiations with ERS. I think it's our final time to obtain these one or two buildings. And if they're not uh, conducive to uh, negotiating with us, that's fine. I just want it in writing. That's all I want. Well, I thought I'd ask him first, and if you want me to respond to the, them to respond to us in writing, I can ask him to do that too at the time. They said I talked yesterday with Dave Champagne, and he said they are eager to speak with me after the holidays, which I presume is after this holiday in the next couple of weeks. And that's when I'm going to meet with them, and that's when I'm going to talk to them, and I will relay your concerns and your um, These are not concerns. About that. This is, this is, you know, I want the village to enter into serious negotiations about those buildings. Not, not just a discussion what the plans are. We pretty much know in general what they want to do. But we know who they are. Well, what you're asking them for is to give it to us for but nothing. I did not say that. I said I want to enter into negotiations so we could obtain those. And see, we have no money for that. It may be six, eight months away. We don't know how much money it is. We don't know anything because we haven't even talked to them. And I'm going and to talk to them in two works weeks. For, five, for, for, for Pfizer, he doesn't work for the new owners. Let's deal with the new owners up front. Find out 
black and white. Here's what we want to do. Give us an answer, yes or no. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. I just wanted to talk to the new owners directly. And I want it in writing. Are you paying that? I mean, if they're going to talk to us in a couple of weeks. But, yeah, when was the last time that we actually got any out of Pfizer? It, was, it had never had Right, but this isn't Pfizer. Right, but. These we, people are, are realtors. They, they sell property. They, right. You know, but we don't know. We don't know for sure, but I'm assuming that they ain't going to. They're not going to sell. If, if they do sell this property to the, to the village, it's going to be an enormous amount of money. Well, I don't know. They're going to just knock it. They're just going to knock it down anyway. So how much is it worth? It's like. Right. Yeah. I just don't know. Yes or no. What, what buildings? What buildings do you plan to? The front building and the attached building, building number five. I don't know. It's but you know the, the front one is the front one is the. If you the get one the front building. And the front, the office, one the office yeah. building, the three-story, a two-story with a basement, nice oh. little basement. Oh, that's the one that over floods there every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah they all do flood. Yeah, any of the basement, but but anyway, the one I believe he's talking about is the front building, and where the side the, parking lot is. That's right. And only the building yeah. behind it. Building five, not, right not the big warehouse, just the right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 That that building five would be a great building for for economic. Development for startup businesses. It would fit right into uh, you know ERS's uh, plans. I would assume to develop that because uh, there's no indication that the whole 35 and a half acres is going to be used by uh, one company. It's, they're interested mainly in the slab. I'd like to see a couple buildings myself. I'd like to see them salvaged. And I think it's great that the, uh, the mayor is going to talk with them. Um, I would like to see a letter up front, and that way uh, they perhaps can have an answer for the mayor when he uh, when he meets with them. Yeah. You know, I, mean, uh, I think it's a, a very vital part of us committing to economic development in this village that we try to get at least one of those buildings over there. I don't see, I mean, if, yeah, I don't see what it's going to hurt if we send them a letter saying that we're interested in those two buildings before we meet. If that's what you're you're looking for. That's right. Thank you, Trustee Menard. So I make a motion that we send a letter, be drafted by the Secretary, and I'll assist with you, Mr. Mayor, to put the wording there exactly the way we want it, and that way we have on record that we're interested in obtaining those two buildings in some form whatever negotiations uh, and we'll know yes or no uh, and then and I mean if they, if they get it back to us when they meet with him that's fine right. just let's like have said, it we'll we it. have it on file we attempted to do this and we did our due diligence so my motion's on the floor I'll second thank you really part of discussion I want to add to that is it was said to us here at, at the last meeting that you know, this stuff should have happened a year or two ago or whatever. And I want to I want to reiterate something I said then. It's the fact that I have been talking about this. I have been talking with the previous administration about trying to get buildings. It wasn't the first time. I'm in my third year as a trustee, and and Trustiano knows that we've been interested in those buildings before. But the, pra the past administration and the present administration hasn't taken the board's feelings and gone forward with them as far as making a an attempt to put something in writing so up until just to show you the timeline on this as i understand it prior to any of us being on this board which would be about four years ago i think and our son maybe you could chime in here if you remember the times pfizer felt obligated to the village for the tremendous debt that they incurred on the village and long-term debt to try and do some good stuff for us. And they gave the village a bunch of things then. Uh, they gave us extra payments on the water and sewer bills. They donated property. They did a bunch of things. We met this summer with Dave Champagne when, and officials from Pfizer from New York City that deal with property to disposal. 
They own the property. We mentioned the property tool. They said they were in negotiations with somebody else, and they also said the um, administrator made a, took a shot at trying to get them to donate a, a playground set here. And they said, no, we already did that. We made donations, I think $80,000 or something, about three years ago. Do you recall any of that, our son? It would have been when, when Mayor Rivers what was What was the donation for? I don't I think remember. they made a legacy donation a while ago. Right. Um, I don't remember. So, so in other words, they'd made all their corporate decisions about what they were going to give the village. <coughs> They've done all that. And now they were with what was left to get rid of. And they were looking for a buyer. They were in close negotiations, and they found a buyer. And the buyer that they found... The problem with the property was they didn't want to sell it as a complete pharmaceutical manufacturing company because it would have just been creating another competitor. And they didn't want to use it because the facility was apparently obsolete. And what most people have trouble understanding that worked there was the, the building may be technologically obsolete, but it was in immaculate condition. It was just perfectly maintained and right up to date. And that's why people have a hard time understanding why they would tear it down. Now, apparently there's a lot of ground contamination in that area. And that's what this, one of the things they had to look for was a company that was large enough to be able to clean up and remediate a site like this and redevelop it, which is where they make their money back on the cleanup. And, the, and the, that's what they do. It's a, a large international corporation. And they have a plan. They've had their engineers and architects looking at this thing for probably a year. And they've pretty much decided what they're going to do with everything there. This is what we got from the people from New York City and the two uh, Nichols, uh, it was Nichols and, and uh, John? John Nichols, John Nichols and Dave Champagne, who both have pretty strong ties to the community area. They, they felt bad about this whole thing, and they tried to do the best they could for us. Now. There was some talk after that, uh, earlier this late summer, early spring, about the village acquiring the administration building for a village office. Uh, that doesn't appear to be very feasible to me. And it takes away, again, like I say, a, a building site that's probably, when developed, will probably be worth about a million dollars. And what I base that on is, over the last 20 or 30 years, that Wyeth and Arist and I don't know if Pfizer did it, but they announced an expansion of that plant every other year, approximately $2 million every other year for about 20 years. Now, half of the $2 million turned out to be um, fittings and fixtures that aren't uh, taxable as far as property tax, but that's the investment they made in the community. Now, all that's being torn out, there's holes in the back of walls, the water's been uh, disconnected from the, from the steam plant, and it's, it looks like it's going to be mostly torn down. Um, that's where they are. Now, we can ask them, we can, we can formally put in there that we have, we're interested, or a couple of trustees on the board are interested in these two pieces of building properties. Um, and they're going to say, okay, or they're going to say, no, we've already got plans for it, or they're going to say, okay, here's what we value them at. Right. Or there's a, there's, three, no, I, there's I three options. I, I don't think that's I mean, an option anymore. I don't think that's, I, I don't see that as an option. Well, it, we, we don't know. We'll, we don't know till, till, till Well, I'm going to know in two weeks because I'm going to ask them. Right. But that's what we're saying. Let's write a letter to whoever, to their main, com main company and headquarters in New York City, headquarters, whatever, and say, we, is there any possibility of the village obtaining these two buildings with the parking lot? I don't believe we're going to take that much away from their lot and everything else that they're going to tear down to where they can still build a $10 million building, a $100 million building, whatever they want. They've got enough mm -hmm. land there. But if, if well, you know, what's the building numbers? I don't building know. one, I believe. It's one and five. Five, I think. I the front know. building. Yeah, but I gotta have, I'm gonna put it in a letter. I gotta be specific. Right. Fine. Now, I'll tell you my view of this village board, and 
vis-a-vis -vis community development. And what I had in mind when I interviewed you for this trustee job is there's a lot of community development that this community needs. We've got vacant buildings downtown. We need a motel. We need a grocery store. We need a bank. I think these are the things that we should be focusing on. More shops and stores in there. Getting involved in an industrial complex like that, I think is way over outside the scope of what a village board is for and what the scope outside the scope of our financial reach is going to be. But we're not we're not getting involved in there. They want to, if, if they give us this, let's say they gave it to us. Right. It's probably going to be, probably, want, it's probably going to be at least a year or two down the road because no, we're going they're to going to have, they're going to have to tear everything else right. around I, I get that. Well, I'm, that's not my point. The point is, let's say everything works out, we get these two pieces of property. Right. What are you going to do with them? Either we switch the offices. Wouldn't it be great to have these buildings as a historical? Something that everybody probably, there's probably ties to this whole village that work at Pfizer. <coughs> I know I'm one. I would love, I wouldn't love, I, I bet you if you went and you asked everybody in this village if they would love to see that front building preserved, they would tell you yes. And I believe that's what we're looking for right here. What we do with it is not a concern right now. The concern is trying to preserve it trying to get it for the village and keep the looks of the village. Well, I'd like to ask a question about taxes. I, I know that's a concern we're talking about, and I certainly want to see uh, uh, tax revenues to be increased in the village as far as uh, new facilities, new buildings. But as a whole up there, are send 35 and a half acres in every building up there. Do you recall what the taxes were paid on that property last year? It was sixty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, on the whole, like on the whole shooting match, and I, I, it's got to be valued at several million dollars. Ten million. So, uh, so I, think, I think it's about fourteen. Valued at fourteen million. I think. Yeah. Like right. So, building one and five would be a small, very small percentage. So, a million dollar valuation doesn't bring us big, big money. We're not, we're not talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Well, your tax rate is four dollars and twenty-five cents per thousand. So right. That's forty thousand dollars. Right. So the whole thirty-five and a half acres with all the buildings up there, in no Ted being wrong, it's only brought to seventy thousand. I was shocked because I would think that a property at that valuation and that amount of property would bring the village a half a million dollars. So if a couple of buildings are yanked out of that equation up there, I think you might even be hard pressed to find out where it even shows up on paper. Well, but the alternative is they're going to bulldoze everything down the ground, so they tax the tax base is now zero except for the value of the land. Well, there's a there's a couple ways to look at this. Number one, you get four dollars a thousand. Let's use the million dollars as a round number as a value, okay? So that's forty thousand in taxes, but you've got twenty-two dollars, I think, a thousand in school taxes, and seven or eight dollars a thousand in county and town taxes. Add it all together, it's over thirty dollars a thousand, which gets you up around three hundred thousand in tax revenues for a million dollars in property. Now, yeah, it's the school budget, but it's if they don't get it from that, they're going to get it from us. You know. I think your figures are wrong, Mr. Mayor. Well, could be because we're at $14 million and we're only getting $65,000. No, no, I'm saying you're right there. The other thing I was going to bring up was industrial taxes and commercial taxes assessments are not like ours on our homes. Our homes only go up. Right. Industrial gets depreciated and they bring it down. They have a whole different tax schedule, assessment schedule for what that's worth. And that's why it's only $10 million. They probably got $40 million in it over the years. Oh, sure. Or who knows? But they depreciate it down on their taxes. And that's how that works. So what you're hoping to do is get a new building in at a million dollars that starts all over again at full value and full assessment. And maybe it goes down over the years, but that's, that's what you're trying to do. And that's just kind of a nutshell. Right. 
and, no. and I don't see where we're hindering any of that by asking for those two buildings. They're still going to tear everything else down. Zero. And wherever, if they leave those two buildings there, they're going to situate whatever building that they're going to prop build, they're going to situate it on those 37 acres, and we're still going to get the tax base off of that. If they tear that building down, whether they give it to us or sell it to us or whatever they do to it, and they, if they, if they don't give it to us, they tear it down, we're getting zero out of it right now. So if they give it to us, no, it's still we're still getting be, zero. So, no, the land would still be accessible, and when they build something new on it, that's where you get your money back. How much is that land? It's, it's, right. it, it's, it's a, a small, it's a small money. lot. In the first place, and I don't care so much about the revenue from property taxes. Uh, I just want to sell them our water, our sewer, our electric, because that's where we get our biggest bang for the buck. Right. But if you take those properties, you be you won't be selling it to them. You'll be selling to ourselves because we'll be in those buildings. There's nothing saying that. I, I think what Trustee LeBlanc is trying to say, and I'm trying to say, is we're trying to preserve that building itself because it has so much history in this village. I mean, whether we whether we put the village offices in it, or we sell it to somebody else, or put you know startup companies in there, give them a break, whatever we have to do with it. I don't. Well. I don't building, think it's legal no, to do anything. Can the building sell property? Well, actually, it is legal if we do it through an IDA or Which we haven't property. created yet. The we don't have IDA. to create one. We, huh? we don't have to create our own. We can partner with any IDA to do there's, it. There's, there's numerous uses for the for that building. And I think it I think it would be good for the village to try to acquire that property. I think it would be an excellent cornerstone for our economic development plan. You know, to say that we have a building that we can have started businesses in. That this, this is the place to come to have a startup business at Russell's Point. Right, and those yeah. startups, they can't expand that one building. They want to start That's up, right. and they have to buy property. And then, Absolutely. Then ERS comes the in ERS and says, hey, property. you know, we're, we're I, feeders you, want a, you want a couple of acres to build, uh, you know, several thousand square foot building? We've got it. We don't interfere with, with those. And who knows what building number five would be uh, taken off from the tax rolls or, or not. Obviously, building number one became village all office complex. Yeah, that would come off from it. Well, worth it too. That that also uh, you know solves a lot of problems that we've got in our present office. Absolutely, absolutely. Where, where it's not handicapped accessible uh, for the upstairs, and it also creates everybody on one level with. Uh, and so I just have to put all most of the village uh, yeah. employees in one spot and meeting room. Okay, so we have a motion, a discussion. Are we going to vote on it? Do you realize that the village is, is, is um, not in the real estate business? Right. That's correct. Absolutely. Right. Well, that's what I think. Can, can the village get in trouble by doing this? Or? Well, I'll tell you what, if, if you acquire the building and try to sell it after? If you, yeah, if you acquire a building, they give it, they give it to you, and then you sell it after. There, there's so many other things that we can do with that, that building. We have to have a starting point sometimes, <coughs> okay? You know, at least two of us I, made, uh, made a commitment for economic development, yeah. and we want we to take things forward. And we don't, we don't propose selling any of those two buildings. I mean, it's like any other No, property. but it sounds like you're talking about renting, renting and stuff like that. I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate and, and, and look at the finance part of it and that that you know the municipalities are not in the business to right right you have real, to go, real you have to go through the legal entity and we will do that if we uh, proceed with it right now we're just trying to see whether we can acquire the buildings if we can't then the discussion is there's no need to discuss yeah. that anymore it's you know if they don't want to give up the buildings then <coughs> we did our due diligence and we'll move on but if right. we can obtain them that's that's the plan for those two buildings. And maybe Delaware give us one. Well, then. Yeah. I don't say give, I say we want to negotiate. We have things to help them, and they have property to help us. We'll see how it washes out. Right. It's not going to hurt the employer. Exactly. And that's all we're doing right now. That's all we're asking. Yeah, just yeah. say, are you willing to negotiate? Enter the negotiations with us. Yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, there's motion and second. All right. Discussion. I'm going to let it pass this time. This is not the way to make a motion. I don't think you're entitled to do that. But this one, I'm going to let vote. All in favor of this? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
I'm opposed to it. And I want to go on record as that. But I don't think you're allowed to make your own motions from the floor, so to speak. And we'll check into that and get a ruling on that later on. And Mr. Mayor, my second item that you pulled has to do with the Civic Center. And I think the board has a vested interest in the success of this building. And I'd like to make sure that we have the resources over time to, to make sure we can get our, our best return on our investment in this building. And my motion, was, uh, which I'll read, is, uh, and, and you said it had merit, and I, I read your answer, but my second motion is I'd like the Parks and Rec Department to submit a monthly income statement <coughs> to the board. I want a better financial control than the once year budget review. We need to see how and when we can break even on uh, our parks and rec are close to it. It's, it's, uh, Read what my response was. And it says, the idea of a rec, rec department submitting monthly statements may have merit. And it says, have you uh, discussed this with the committee chair of the department? So I, cop I copied and to everybody to, to that. Uh, it says, it's not one of your committees. And that's true. I'm not going to get involved with the day to day. I just say that this is a, uh, a business in itself. And uh, I think it needs uh, more financial control. I'd like to know. I, I'd like to know uh, month to month how we're doing and uh, over, over the next few years how we're, we're going to improve. I think we can. I think uh, we've put some people in place to uh, drive our business model. And I'd just like to you know, see our success not once a year, but on a monthly basis. I know it's going to take time to turn, you know, turn this around. Right. And uh, we, you know, we started from the ground up, and you did a good job, Mr. Mayor. I commend you on getting the building, building ready. And we just have to keep, keep pushing. Uh, new programs and offerings and uh, so we can offer the community and keep this building going and uh, not be pointed at by just having a you know a red elephant uh, in the village so that was my motion i'd like to see better financial controls well i'm in the process of, of um having discussions with the department head which is the administrator in this case and he's going to work on some numbers when we get some numbers because we haven't had any yet we don't have anything to compare it to yet but we're also in the process of doing some, uh, going to be making some recommendations at the next board meeting on some personnel issues there. Uh, I can't do it tonight. I hope to do it tonight. We can't until we get some uh, information from our labor attorney and from civil service what our options are. And I'd be happy to fill you guys in informally afterwards about that. But uh, that's in process right now. So. I'd like to defer this whole thing at least till next meeting, and then I'll know better where we're standing on this. Um, I've made it a, a one of my goals since I've been on this board was to get this rec center so that the village taxpayers aren't subsidizing it all year round. I did it before when I was mayor. I got it so that we could use it year round with the new floor in it, so that that way you could only you'd only have to be justified in subsidizing it half of the time. No, not, that's not really a good way. You wouldn't have the hockey players so have, paying for the facility for all year round you when they're not using it. They're in the summer. So. Right. Well, you couldn't use it in the summer before. Right. Now you can. So now what we want to do is we want to focus in on the five months or so that it has ice skating revenue. That's the sole revenue of this place at this time of the year. And that's what we're trying to do. And it was every year we had to put money from the general fund in to make this budget balance. And from what I could see last year, it was really getting up there in price. Now, hopefully, we're turning the corner on that. And you know, we've had some pretty, pretty heavy lifting to do on some of the. Well, I won't get into it, but you know what I'm talking about. And that's what we're working on now. Uh, we've just about completed the renovations on the physical part of the building. Purchasing this equipment tonight should be the last of that type of thing that we'll be doing unless something unforeseen comes up. And we're going to see where it goes from now. We'll see how well we can run it. Uh, right now it's running with, you know, with nobody basically here. You know, we don't have enough staff. And uh, that's what we're looking into a couple alternatives. I'll talk to you guys later about that. I'll know something more formally 
at the December 3rd meeting to make a recommendation. And Trustee Long, I did speak with uh, Mr. Peters and he found a program that he wants to implement for the day-to-day -day finances up here and get uh, Ms. Shields to do it, get the program out. So we're in the process of trying to get the financial statements that you're looking for. Excellent. I think over time, if we can watch these numbers, I think we can improve these numbers by giving it the support that this facility right. needs. I, I don't think it's a question of cutting back expenses. It's probably increasing expenses and trying to drive for greater revenue since we have a lot of you know, non-winter right. opportunities, let's say. We just got to invest yep. and, uh, and create the programs that will bring us revenue. Yep. I agree. Well, I think she's doing a good job right now. I mean, I mean for what she's for got. She's got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what she's For the done. situation that she's been put in. Right. Okay. Other report. Is that all? That's all. Other reports. Administrator. Um, I think most of the things I've been working on have been covered tonight. Okay. Or seven, anything? The only thing I have is, is I just want to, I, I don't want to open up a can of worms, but I just want to go back to this, this um, letter that you're going to send to the ERS again. I, I don't, I want the board to realize that I'm not against sending the letter. I just was getting the impression from the board members that it sounded like you wanted to acquire these buildings to so rent them out or to sell them or something like that. And no, that's why I was no, saying that was not, no, that's that was not kind of what I was getting at. So, misspoken or whatever. So I just, that's the only reason I said that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fully yeah. understand. There could be a thought where, you know, that building five could be set up so that uh, we're offering the business uh, free space for a certain amount of time. You can't do that, though. So we can't rent, we can't get free, we it's, can't it's, do it's anything? Good. We're no, our hands are tied? No, we'll probably have to go through an IDA or some similar, some similar program we can, uh, depending on the program. But not directly as a village. Not, we're not, the village, you're, you are correct. So what, no, let me get this straight. What you're saying is, we acquire the prop. let's say they went along with this. We acquire the property from ERS. Then we turn around and transfer the property to an IDA. Yes, you can do that. I don't know if we can or not. We'll have to look into that. Why not you can? I, I don't know if you can give village property to a, a corporation to redevelop it into something else. I don't know if you can do that. The IDA that we've had before never did that with village property or publicly owned property. They only did it with private property. Well, why don't we wait and see what they why don't we wait and see what ERS says and then you go exactly. there, but, you know, that's what, that's what It's just saying. that, you know, but I mean, if, if, if they do come back and say, yes, you know, we're interested in something, I hope there's some kind of a plan in place where... Well, let's, let's see what the know. negotiations come up with, because they may... We don't know until they say yes, you know. If it's no, it's no. If it's, well, we'll talk, then we'll talk and see. And then the results... <coughs> but at this point in time, we have nothing. We'd, we'd also welcome any help if anybody wants to make any phone calls for us of economic development for the village. Everybody wants to call, everybody wants to find out anything, what is, what is legal and what's not. It would be a great help. We can get that one question clarified very, pretty, pretty quickly though, before the next meeting, I think. So. All right, code enforcement officer. Well, we're just getting set, set up now. Uh, as I told you earlier today, they just, the guy just finally got online so we get our programs back, and that's coming up. We're working on getting a little bit of schooling. Mickey is, uh, is uh, coming in on a regular time, and we're working on things. We're trying to get all the files and things together. Uh, I want to get everything up so in, in the event that anything happens around here, that Donna can just walk in the office and open up the drawer and find out what's in it. Right now, you can't find anything. That's just a, a bad thing. Uh, if we're ever audited or anything like that, they want to check in if something ever happens, I'm over and inspect it. At this point, we're kind of not in a very good, good position to respond, let's put it that way. And it happens because it's happened at the town. Oh, yeah. I just want to, you know, it's, it's best to keep uh, good records. That's the key to the whole damn thing. You know, these people, you know, like, 
it's a tough deal around here because uh, Joe Schmuck puts a roof on his house on the weekend. I mean, you're not going to, uh, of course, half of them don't have a rent. But you know, the only thing you're supposed to inspect all this property after they skin the roof off and things, and, and that hasn't been done apparently. I don't know. I don't want any, anything to go by. There's no list of any inspections that happened that I can see. They might be there. Don't know. We'll see. Let me ask a question, Mr. Cooper. Now, why, if they start tearing down, do they need a demolition permit? They've already come to us and applied. Oh, they already have? Yeah. Oh, okay. The only thing that we control on that is the asbestos abatement. Uh, they got to have a, each building is going to be assessed individually. They're going to send us a report of the individual assessment. And as they take it down, we're going to inspect things and see if things are, are taken away properly, disposed of properly, and that, that's what our job is here. Oh, okay. But that company is doing it. It's a great big company. They're doing the working in Massachusetts right now, tearing some buildings down for Pfizer also, I believe. Uh, it's one of the little things they're going to, they're going to open up an office up there after this holiday, and I'm going to assume when he said this holiday, I'm going to say to like everybody else, we think it's Thanksgiving. And they're going to be looking for some local help. Just got the buildings out inside before they take them down. Uh, I've got some phone numbers if somebody wants to apply. But the only thing is that uh, these people are real professionals. They do this all the time. Uh, and they have all the paperwork. When the guy showed up at the office, we said we talked to him for over two hours, and he had everything that we asked for. He had it right there. There was no, uh, I'll get it. Because they had it. Thank you. Okay, I'll tell you what, uh, I can submit a little, well, I'll be at all meetings anyway. You guys need to know anything. I, you know, if I have anything, I, any questions I want to ask you, it's not like, you know, you're, you're talking about those buildings up there. Just remember that whole Harris complex was heated and one heating system in the middle of it. So if you were considering a building, you were better consider putting a great big heating system in this building. You should check all your options before you go with this. This is might be a little bit hairy. Well, thank you. Anything else? No. Do you need anything from us? Just like, like a couple of things Donna's going to get for me. And I, like I said, when we set the computers up, we're going to have it so Donna can access it. And, you know, it's going to be a little different deal. It's going to be it's more transparent. It'll be more open to everyone. I mean, so anybody can check on it. She can check. If we're not around, she can check the status or something. That's what we've been. That's what we've been aiming for. Yeah, well, you know, communication is a great thing. And if we don't have it, it's, it's not going to work. Yep. I agree. Okay. okay. Anything else? Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.